1974, July the 4th. The first day they were here. And there's one left to live in that was here the first day. I was at the Grand Ole Opera and I told Roy Acuff, I said, I'm gonna build a music barn. He said, you build it and they'll come. And he was right. There's bluegrass music everywhere, but this is a unique experience. I call it, I gotta go get my bluegrass fix. And that's what I tell my wife all the time, it's time for me to go get my fix. She said, okay. It's just a place to have fun. It brightens your day. It, it brightens my mind. And it's like, well, it is stepping back in time, at least 50 years, if not more. And it's kind of like a dinner theater, free of charge. I don't know how you can beat that. And, uh, and you'll make friends before you leave. First, it's Clyde Manus. Nobody could do it like Clyde does. Every Tuesday night, I cook 10, 12 pound of pintos. 30 pound potato salad, five cases of water, six cases of drink, and 150 cups of coffee and feed people every Tuesday night. And sometimes there's 100 here and sometimes there's 200, 300. There's an old wood frame store not very far from me where the folks all gather around and you'll enjoy their company. There's open mic on Tuesday night and you'll get in for free. There's cakes and pies and endless seats, all your friends to see. Clyde, that's a, that's a character that is hard to describe. He's the same as he was 20 years ago when I first met him. On your G-Run or work on something new. So meet me down at Clyde's place and let's pick a few. He is a unique guy. He is a people person. He calls me almost every day of the week to chat what's going on. Clyde always welcomes all the new people and he makes it a point to talk to everybody and make everybody feel welcome and, and you just want to come back. The, the first time I met him was the first time I came. I was a little shy, I was playing the bass, and they took me right in and I played with him um, over, over there in the little jam, jam section back there. And he got me up on stage and I love it. In 1990, it got so big out there so many people we couldn't handle it. So we built this room. Got Bill Monroe and Lester Flat up on the wall and Ernest Tubb in the middle. This building actually has been several, several things. It was a lawnmower shop.
There's my wife. She's dressed up in old timey. I told her the other day she's prettier now than she was when I married her. <laughs> she didn't answer. <laughs> the pottery has been here probably for decades, and Clyde was an active potter. He and his wife. This is where we made all of our pottery. We made around 30,000 pieces of pots, and we would turn pots. And my grandson, he took it over, but they called him to Afghanistan, so we packed everything up and waited until he comes back. And he'll be back to start all over again. And I bought this farm, and I got four kids and six grandchildren, and all of them live on the farm, on this farm. I built them all a home. And we eat together about every day. See all my grandchildren every day. They listen to me sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Me and my wife were married in 1960, June. We started building chicken houses, and now, 45 years later, I'm old in the chicken house row. <laughs> so I quit raising. And we tore them down, and my son's fixing to make greenhouses up here and raise tomatoes and squash, whatever. But we had a good life here. When you was in the bed of sleep, my chickens were still making you money. I raised tobacco for 15 years here, too. I had tobacco. Had to back allotment. And my wife got tired of it one day and said we weren't gonna raise no more and we didn't. Too hard to work. I'm 74 years old and never had, never had a ticket, but you know the reason I ain't never had a ticket? I walk across the road to work. Clyde is a living storybook. <laughs> he has so many stories to tell, and he's he's played everywhere, just about that you can play. He's played with lots of famous musicians. That was Bill Monroe. I played with him on the Early Bird Show in 1984, I believe it was. The guy behind him is Les Lester. He was the official photographer for the Grand Ole Opry for 45 years. That's Dale Earnhardt. He gave that to me in 1979 when he was Rookie of the Year. He came in here and I got, I got some photos of him standing beside his car in 1979 when he was Rookie of the Year and he signed all of them. When they raced at Rockingham, they would come to him, you know. Dale Earnhardt, he was a real nice fellow. Hmm. He ain't here no more though. He has been known to stretch things a little bit. He's aware of it. He knows it. He don't care. He claimed that he could go up to a beehive, a, bo a box beehive, and he could, and he didn't have to wear a bee suit. We didn't believe him. A few days later, sure enough, he's in the newspaper smoking bees, no, no bee suit on. Says Clyde Manus, you know, able to do it without bee suit. Oh man, <laughs> he's he's a man. I love him. We all love him. All right, six, are we ready? Check number one. Check, check, one, two, one, one. Okay. I had a cousin that played electric guitar, and he traveled, and he would come home and teach me how to music when I was about 10 years old. And I fell in love with music then. So if it's good country, I love it. If it's good gospel, I love it. And if it's good bluegrass, I love it. Most of the bluegrass songs tell a story, most of them, and that's what I like. It's a down-to-earth music, straight out and out down-to-earth. The old country songs fit right in with bluegrass and vice versa. Kiss me, darling. 
darling, one more time. Please kiss me one more I don't really consider myself a real musician because there's all levels of musicians, but I've loved it since I was a kid. My dad was a real fiddler, and I sang some in high school. Then I came down here about six years ago, and a friend of mine was sitting in the circle playing her guitar, and she invited me to come back the next week, and I've been coming ever since. Me and my friends, we make up the up-and-coming bluegrass band of a fiddle player, a mandolin player, a bass player. My sister plays the guitar. I play the banjo. We try to get up here about every week. I, I thought, you know, when I first started coming down here, you know, it was it going to be old people, you know, but it's not. They learn so quick. They're exposed to a whole lot more than what I was when I was growing up. And I'm so glad to see the young people involved with it. Oh, it, it does me good just to get to pick with them. People, they're, they're super nice here. They, you know, you, you go up on stage and they act like they love you. It's, it's just, it's a real, real joy to perform. Because there's a lot of people come here, this is their life. They don't have nothing else. They're old people like me and, and they enjoy it. There are a lot of people here that don't get any other entertainment. They don't go to movies, they don't go to plays, they go to church, and they come to Clyde's on Tuesday night. And that makes them special. Everybody feels welcome. And it couldn't exist without Clyde. He's out to help anybody he can. He'll do anything for you if he likes you. I mean, he's, he's just a fun to be around to me. Clyde is one of the best people that I have ever met. Clyde is a servant of the community. He does lots of things that nobody knows about. And, uh, he's still, still going strong. Just is a testimony for how good music will make your life, I think.
You ain't singing a song. Alan's probably choking his bits. Making a movie. We dance. Columbus Georgia won't be back in Tennessee. We dance. Stop. I got an artificial arm and I can't play anymore. I lost it. But then one thing about it, at one time there wasn't nobody could beat me.